Good morning. Welcome to the forecast discussion for June 30th, 2014, the last day of June as we get ready for July and the 4th of July weekend that is on the way, making this a very short work week. So what are we dealing with today? Well, we have threat for isolated showers and thunderstorms today and tomorrow, a strong cold front from the middle of the week, possibly some tropical trouble, and then we head towards the weekend where I think you're going to like the news I'm going to give you. So let's get to it. First of all, we have temperatures in the mid to upper 70s throughout much of the Philadelphia and New York City metropolitan areas with humidity on the rise on a southwesterly wind. We do have a few isolated showers and thunderstorms over portions of northeastern Pennsylvania and the Hudson River Valley, keeping temperatures in the upper 60s to lower 70s. Temperatures by this afternoon will rebound into the mid 80s for almost all locations, upper 70s to lower 80s along the immediate coast and over Long Island. Overall, not that bad of a day, pretty much averaging near normal for this time of year. I mean, it is getting to July now, so you get a little more humid and you have warmer temperatures in the 80s. So it's not like we're dealing with anything unusual for this time of year at all. Taking a look at the surface map, very interesting setup we have here. First of all, we have high pressure shifting off the coast, allowing for a southwesterly wind and transporting a hot and humid air mass into the Philadelphia and New York City metropolitan area for Tuesday and Wednesday. That is going to set up the stage, meanwhile, for the development of this tropical disturbance, which we'll talk about in detail. This disturbance is probably gaining a little bit more news than what it should, but of course, anytime any type of tropical low approaches anywhere near the United States, so it's a little bit of increased anticipation on what could happen. But right now what we're dealing with here in reality is a very weak and disorganized area of low pressure to the north of the Bahamas that will have to be monitored not necessarily for direct impact on the region but an enhancement of this cold front right here which will move through the northern plains and into the Great Lakes today and then by the time we get to Wednesday evening this cold front will start to approach the region with widespread showers and thunderstorms, and Thursday looks like to be a very wet day with widespread showers and thunderstorms, and some of those thunderstorms could be rather severe with the potential for localized flash flooding. So let's put this all together. Again, we have this feature of high pressure, this tropical low pressure system, and this cold front. Those are the key points for the forecast. On the radar, basically what we have is the first of many weak disturbances trying to approach the region. The bark here is a lot worse than the bite. Much of this is not reaching the ground over northeastern Pennsylvania. But you are seeing some scattered showers and a few rumbles of thunder here over northeastern Pennsylvania. And that will be a threat for the entire region, especially the northern tier, for today and tomorrow in the afternoon hours. You have warmer temperatures, a little bit more humidity, slightly unstable atmosphere in place, and you have a few weak disturbances approaching, thus the threat for an isolated shower or thunderstorm. Not a washout, not the end of your afternoon plans. Just bring an umbrella with you just in case. Other than that, eh, not that big of a deal. In fact, if you are south of New York City, you probably won't see anything at all this afternoon as these disturbances pretty much collapse before they even reach the coast. On the infrared satellite picture, you kind of see the game here, what we have. First of all, very intense thunderstorms over the upper Midwest associated with our cold front and polar disturbances diving in behind this cold front. So you're getting these very impressive thunderstorm complexes. Now these thunderstorm complexes, by the time they reach the Philadelphia and New York City metropolitan area, like this one right here, pretty much collapse and are a shell of its former self with only an isolated shower or thunderstorm, a threat for tomorrow as well from this particular complex of thunderstorms. So you kind of see what happens here is that they rapidly intensify over the upper Midwest, drive through the Ohio River Valley, and then collapse as they reach the coast. And that's pretty much what we can expect for Tuesday and Wednesday as well until this cold front that is out here approaches the east coast. Meanwhile, here is our tropical low. This is what's causing all the news on Twitter and Facebook, by the way. This poorly organized disturbance 
with barely any thunderstorms, most of the thunderstorms are to the south of the circulation, is what we're going to be watching for and what some models are picking up as a potential for a rapidly developing tropical system. I should note that there is a very interesting divide between some operational model guidance, like the European model guidance, and the ensemble model guidance. And I'm kind of leaning towards the European ensemble model guidance for the most part. And I'll show you later on the difference between the two. I'll illustrate it because unfortunately the uh, ensemble model guidance is not a free uh, display. And unfortunately I'm not allowed to show it. So what I'll do is I'll illustrate that way you kind of get an idea of what we're dealing with here. But this is the main story. This is what's all causing a lot of anxiety down here. Now, when we take a look at the visible satellite picture, there's no doubt this is a very nice, well-defined, low-level circulation here. And it's diving down towards Florida. But notice there's no thunderstorms wrapping around. There's a lot of dry air in this system. And there's a lot of what we call shear coming in from the north, forcing a lot of these thunderstorms to the south. So this is in no way, shape, or form something that is you know, immediately dangerous or you know life-threatening. It's a nuisance. That's pretty much the bottom line here. This thing's a pain in the neck because we're about to enter the 4th of July weekend. Everyone's traveling. And you don't want a tropical low-pressure system with a cold front approaching the East Coast because that leads to a lot of rain because you're introducing a tropical air mass and a polar air mass, and those two do not mix very well. So when we take a look at the water vapor satellite picture, what we basically have here, I have the upper level winds overlaid with the surface features. These H's should be lows. So just so you know, all these H's are actually low pressure systems. So here's a 1011 millibar low. Here's our waves of low pressure along this very slow moving cold front. Here's our trough starting to get its act together over the northern plains. Right now the winds are running parallel to this cold front. So as a result, it's not moving all that much. Once the trough deepens, this cold front will get a nice kick start and drive towards the east coast. Timing of this cold front will be key because the idea here is that the shear that is currently over this disturbance right now will start to abate. You see all these light winds here? That's pretty much what will shift towards the Bahamas, allowing this low pressure system to develop. The time window for development is basically tomorrow afternoon to Thursday morning. And in that time period, you'll have light winds, you'll have very weak vertical shear, and as a result, with all the warm water down there around the Bahamas, and the only location, quite frankly, in the Atlantic with above normal sea surface temperature anomalies, you get the potential for tropical development. It doesn't mean we're going to have a hurricane. I saw some, one individual, I won't name the name, put out that uh, one model, which should only be used out to 48 hours at most, Posting for five days out of a potential hurricane over uh, North Carolina. There isn't any real model support in a synoptic level for that type of development. Not enough time, in my opinion. Especially with the way that this low pressure system is organized. So, again, something that we need to watch. But basically, you have a very short window of time. And then this cold front and this trough drives to the east coast with strong southwesterly wind, picks up whatever moisture is out here, funnels it up along and to the east of the advancing cold front, producing widespread showers and thunderstorms, with these thunderstorms featuring very heavy tropical downpours. The timing of the trough will be key in determining how fast all this moisture gets kicked out into the Atlantic. Not necessarily the track of the actual tropical low pressure system. I think that stays well off the coast. Uh, but the speed of the trough will determine just how fast that moisture clears out. Just in time for the 4th of July weekend. So let's take a look at the model guides. Using the European model guides. Uh, so that way I can illustrate what the uh, ensemble model guides are showing. For the first 48 hours, pretty much strong agreement. High pressure and control. Nice southwesterly wind. Threat for an isolated shower or thunderstorm in the afternoon and evening. Today's temperatures will rise into the mid-80s. Tomorrow's low temperatures in the mid-60s. So you already see the increase in that humidity with the low temperatures. High temperatures tomorrow afternoon in the upper 80s to lower 90s. It'll feel like the mid-90s with that increasing humidity. And again, a threat for an isolated shower or thunderstorm. On Wednesday, 
The threat for showers and thunderstorms increases as that cold front slowly approaches the region. We're going to have more tropical moisture move up the coast, so these thunderstorms will be capable of some very heavy downpours. Low temperatures on Wednesday will be in the upper 60s to lower 70s, high temperatures in the upper 80s to lower 90s. Now on Thursday, this is where it gets interesting. What we basically have here is our trough approaching the region. Here's our tropical disturbance. Now, the ensemble model guidance keeps this low very weak, and up to this point, so does the operational model guidance. So at this rate, at this point, what we basically have here is a weak tropical low off of the South Carolina coast with moisture from that tropical low being drawn up ahead of the cold front. So what you end up with is widespread showers and thunderstorms, and those thunderstorms are going to be capable of some very heavy downpours. Temperatures on Thursday will range from the upper lower to mid 70s for lows, so very tropical air mass in place. Mid to upper 80s for highs. I'm staying away from the lower 90s right now only because of the potential for more rainfall and cloud cover. This is going to be the key aspect of the forecast. By, Friday, by Thursday night into Friday morning, this cold front will move through with widespread showers and thunderstorms. By the time we get to Friday afternoon, the difference between the operational model guidance and the ensemble model guidance is that this low pressure system remains very weak. And considering the strong southwesterly shear, I like that idea much better than what the operational European model guidance is showing. So this low pressure system stays at about 1,014 millibars, 1,012 millibars, not really all that impressive. Basically a tropical depression at most. As a result, this cold front just pile drives through. By Friday morning, you have some lingering showers and then this dry air, all this dry air that is over the Ohio River Valley and over the east of Great Lakes drives towards the coast. So you have clearing skies on Friday morning from west to east with a lingering shower or two along the immediate coast on Friday morning on 4th of July. And then by the afternoon, everyone clears out. Skies clear out. The humidity crashes. You're talking about temperatures on 4th of July starting off in the upper 60s and lower 70s because of the humid air mass and chocolate air mass in place. By the afternoon, you're talking about upper 70s to lower 80s with falling humidity as that dry polar air builds in. And then for the weekend, for Saturday and Sunday, high pressure and complete control, polar air mass in place, very comfortable conditions, low temperatures in the upper 50s to lower 60s over the interior, lower to mid 60s along the coast, high temperatures in the lower to mid 80s for everyone, a very comfortable and pleasant weekend in place. So again, the, real, the only real question mark is Friday morning, seeing how fast that cold front moves off. The faster that cold front moves off, the more likely you'll see clearing. And right now, I am heavily leaning on the European Ensemble Model Guidance because it makes the most physical sense. Again, we'll have to keep an eye on this disturbance and keep an eye on the advancing cold front. That is your forecast discussion for today. Of course, I'm your meteorologist, Stephen DiMartino. Follow the latest weather information at nynjpaweather.com and nynjpaweather on Twitter, Facebook, Google+, and LinkedIn. Have a wonderful day, and as always, stay safe out there.